What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. Um, thank you guys so much for watching the last video. The views were up there and I'm stoked on it. Thank you guys so much. Uh, today we're back at Arizona Transaxle and we're here to pick up Cletus's transmission and see what kind of damage I did to it. What do you think? I think it was yeah, pretty bad. It was. It was. So we're going to jump in there and uh, get with our buddy Bill and uh, see what see. Ah, we're going to jump in. We're going to jump in there, get with our buddy Bill and see what happened. All right, guys. So we're back over here at Arizona Transaxle with our buddy Bill and Casey and all the guys here. And we're going to show you what we did to Cletus's tranny. Um, let's start with the dogs. All right. So when he shifted it too hard, this early dog just said, can't take it. Um, definitely seen that before. Took the fork out with it. Oh, yeah. So that's probably why it was stuck. Yeah, that's why it was stuck. Uh, it also had the older smaller 3 8 bolts so we upgraded to the bigger bolts. right we talked about drilling that out we thought maybe that that just broke but yeah no we, such luck we drilled out the other one that was still good the new one came with the bigger bolt so awesome it also had all the smaller gears with the drop on face plates um, to get into a bigger dog we had to change these sliders over so we changed all the gears to the lighter gears that now have this part of the gear. Right, it's not a drop-on dog, it's an actual dog gear. Yeah. Perfect. So first gear was also golded and burned. So Garrett, I think this was you guys with the tracks. This, um, I'm gonna blame Dave Sparks for that one. <laughs> so because all the gears got a different width, we had to change the spacers that go between them. Uh, whoever was in there before us had a chisel rather than the correct socket for the nut on the end of the pinion. Awesome. Uh, early brass bushing for the throwout fork. Those things galled all the time, so we put an oil light bronze one in. Um, of course, all the bearings and stuff, it's pretty much standard. Pretty much standard to do the bearings, yeah. First generation reverse relied on a press to hold this bearing in, and you can see this bearing is slid up. Absolutely, yeah. So what that does is block how far it can go into reverse, and you can see all the rounded edges here. Where you missed, yep. That It wasn't going all the way into this gear, so that's what was taking these edges out. So we went to the later gear where this sits down and a snap ring goes in to get better reverse engagement. Awesome. There's that smaller uh, shift lock bolt. We yeah. went to the bigger ones. Awesome. Well, looks like we got it all back together for you there, Cleeter, and uh, we're going to get it back in the car. Oh, and the... This is the early shift drum, and I don't know if these were softer than others, but where this bolt goes and follows to shift it, it burrs this all up, and this one's been sanded and ground on a few times, uh, so we put a... So someone's definitely been in this before. Oh, yeah. okay. It's a very early box. That's but, what I told them, yeah. But it has been worked on. Okay. All right, guys, so... We got the uh, transmission all loaded up. We're headed out to Glamis now, and we're gonna go get this thing installed, get the motor and trans put back in the car. Great. All right, good morning, guys. We're back out here at Glamis Fab. We got Joe, we got Weddo, and myself, and I had a couple of customers help us. And... What? Filming, oh. air, noise. <laughs> Sorry so about that. We got, uh, we got Cletus's transmission put back inside the car. The guys helped us sit it in there, so. We're going to go ahead and get it bolted in, get everything finished up, and then uh, we're going to be putting this bad daddy right back in the car, and then uh, we're going to give Carl... Carnage? Did you show Carl? Oh, uh, yeah, we did that at the tranny <laughs> shop. Uh, we'll give Carl a call from Shock Talk and get him back over here, and we'll get back to finishing up tuning on this suspension today. All right, well, the transmission, as you guys saw earlier, is back in. Uh, we're hooking up the shift cables now. I do not like how these shift cables are routed around the around the CVs like that, which makes me believe that this car was probably not a sequential car and all this stuff was added on later. Um, if we get some time, I think Joe and I are gonna go through these shift cables and I think we're gonna put another sh the other shifter in this car and do it right. So when you're shifting, you pull back for forward gears, not forward. Um, there is a, we could modify this setup, but I'm just gonna leave it the way it is for now. But I think in the off season, we're going to revisit this shifter, shorter cables and different shifter. But in the meantime, this thing's going back together pretty quick and uh, we should be able to go rip it today. Cool. All right, guys. So I know we've showed you this in the past. Another little tech tip, the clips on the side, we always silicone them always because these things have a tendency of failing. These little 
spring clips that hold your throat bearing in. So I always silicone them. That way they uh, stay in, they don't go anywhere. So we're just about ready to drop Cleeter's motor back in and uh, get this thing back to ripping. All right, so what we're doing now is uh, found some extra brackets in here for, from some old stuff. We're gonna go ahead and cut that stuff off. So we're gonna cut some extra brackets off in here and uh, make some room in here. There's, uh, it's taking up quite a bit of room. up all this room by the shift cable on the slave cylinder. Let me get a wrapper. Uh, we'll smooth that out and hit it with a little black. And now we're cleaning up all this room. There was a bunch of extra wire and stuff just stuffed up in here and it made it really hard to get to anything up in this top area above the transmission. So uh, made it hard to get to the coolant lines for the intercooler, hard to get to the map sensor wires. So we'll uh, get this all cleaned up and we're gonna get the motor stuff back in here in just a minute. So guys, I want to show you something, you know, sometimes when we're working on cars like this and it's not, not that this is Cletus's car or anything that, and I am going through a bunch of it to make sure it's right for him. But just like for instance, on a regular customer's car, we're just putting the, like if it was just a transmission job or a clutch job or something on the motor, and then we go to start pulling things apart and inspecting some stuff, we started looking into the fan wiring and here's what we found. Let me jump back out of here one real quick. Go ahead. So... I saw that the hot wire comes off of the relay, right? It's just one hot wire for two fans, which is not that great. And then they had the ground here, and I'm like, well, if four wires come out of the fans, they had to have junctioned it down to two wires somewhere. So I pulled the loom back, and I found where they did it right here. And they used all the same color green wire, which is awesome. But then they junctioned it into this. Take a look at that, guys. So now here's something that we absolutely have to fix. So, like I said, I would fix this anyway because it's Garrett, Cletus's car and I'm going through it. But um, if it was a customer's car, then I have to present that to my customer who just spent, you know, thousands of dollars to have his transmission rebuilt. And now I have to tell him that his fan wiring is trashed. But we're going to go ahead and fix this now. Thank God we're here and I found it. Um, yeah, I wonder how both those fans were even working. I mean, they were under a heavy load. Look at that. That's bad. So now I got to go through the fan wiring before we can test this car today. But... We'll get it fixed up for Cletus and for us and uh, get her back in the dunes. All right, well, I got the fan wires fixed up. I went ahead and soldered everything up. Um, it leads to one 10 gauge that goes to a relay. Uh, it's not enough for both of these fans. It, it, it's enough for now. I mean, the car ran that way forever. When I get the car back home, I'm gonna add in a second relay. So we always put two relays on the fans, always. Uh, I got a couple more wires to hook up here for power on the starter, and then we can uh, back this car up and get the motor put back in. So, uh, you dropped your oil pan just to do a little inspection and check out the spacers on your windage tray. So this has definitely got a stroker crank in it because the windage tray space of the crank don't hit it. And I see all ARP hardware underneath there. So definitely not a stock motor, brother. All right, so it's a couple hours later. Um, like I showed you guys just now, we checked under the oil pan definitely a built motor but got the motor back in we shortened up some of the lines to make things a little easier to work on in this car it looks like a lot of this stuff was added later on they added 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 and then we had hoses looped through other hoses through electrical wiring so we cleaned most of that up and got it out of the way um, we're going to put the power steering pump back on i'm going to route the belt and then this thing is just about ready to uh, add coolant and fire up just getting ready to test fire it and the uh, fuel pump wouldn't come on. So we started looking into some of the wiring and again, you guys know how much I love butt connectors and check that out. <laughs> that was the wire on the Aeromotive A1000. Now, Aeromotive A1000s are very, very particular with the voltage. When they start dropping voltage or you get loose connections like that, they start running lean. So we're gonna put a new 10 gauge running over to the pump, get it soldered up and uh, we'll get them rolling again. Good to go. Oh, yeah. All right, we're just putting the skid plate back on. I'm gonna uh, bleed the coolant out. <laughs> Cletus's car is ready to rip again. Oh, uh, we gotta put the trunk wing back on, too. 
Uh, we jumped in here and cleared out a lot of this area here. There was some scavenging type. They had some fittings stuck in the exhaust right here that stuck out like this far, guys. So it made it almost impossible to change a belt. And if George ever gets anywhere near this car, we know it's going to need a belt. So uh, I did give him three or four spares in the trunk. But we cleared out all this area. We capped off. And then I moved the O2 sensor to this side. It was here rubbing up against the tensioner right there. So we freed up this area. Um, in the off season, I'm going to really free up this area by getting rid of all of these coolant lines. We're going to redo the whole cooling system on this thing. Uh, this is a single pass radiator. Uh, we're going to make it a dual pass. So we'll put a put a divider in right here and an outlet right here. Well, I actually changed the radiator because this is some, it's just a cheap uh, automotive radiator. So we'll get that changed out. But in the meantime, we're gonna bleed this coolant, fire this thing up and uh, get her ripping again. Guys, I just wanted to jump in here and give you a quick reminder. You can get on thedunatic.com. Go on and get your t-shirts, your hats, and your hoodies. we got merch in stock and ready to ship now. That's thedunatic.com. Now let's get back to the video. Got Cletus' car all done. Took it for a rip down Sand Highway from the store. We came over here to Osborne Lookout, watched the sunset. We had some other friends here checking out a car that my buddy just bought. And then we rolled up on the Dirt Life Media, guys. Check this thing out, you guys. This guy is out here on his own dime cleaning up the dunes for us this giant magnet set up and he just cruises around and sucks up all the crap that all you guys have left not you guys that everybody's left out here over the years uh, check this out that's just from a couple hours today i guess or this morning old pliers this stuff is all just hardcore all nails from old pallets and stuff but Oh, yeah, he's got it on a winch. That is freaking cool. Did you just make this yourself? A uh, guy out of Oregon helped me build it. Oh, cool. I designed it. Obviously, some sponsors from the industry helped. That's awesome. Who else is the sponsors? Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, we know the guys at NTS really well. DRT, SF Racers, Packard Performance, they've all been a huge part of the program. Packard. Cool. This is freaking cool. And just like that, guys. And then he drives around, the magnet sucks up all the material. And then you lay out some tarps or something, right? And then release it. Oh, cool. So, like, I can pull up. It's about 12 feet wide. I drop. So this is the release for the magnets. So you release the nails and it's all on a container. Right. Man. So if anybody wants to contact you or, or get involved with your project, maybe even donate, how do they get a hold of you? Dirt Life Media, Dirty Hands, Clean Sands. So we just started our nonprofit called Dirty Hands, Clean Sands. Uh, that's officially a 501c3 now, which is really Awesome. Nonprofit. Yeah. Cool. Oh, nice. This one's going to be in Utah for UTV Invasion. Awesome. TV Takeovers. Uh, a lot of fun stuff spreading the positive message. Yeah. Cool. All right, guys. Well, I'll leave a link in the description down below to all of his contact information. If you guys want to get involved, help out in any way, you can hit him up. And uh, this thing's badass. I just love seeing new innovation in the dunes. And, you know, Sherry was out there with a hand magnet picking stuff up. And this this blows away the hand magnet. Yeah, they still got the rollers here. Yeah. 
but this is really cool, man. Thank you so much for doing this for all the Duners, man. We really appreciate you. That's awesome. All right, guys, so we made it back. Cletus's car is a ripper once again. Uh, this thing's going to be ready for them to come out for Camp Razor. Sherry, what did you think of the suspension? Cletus, you are going to be in for a ride. Yeah, most definitely, dude. This thing, it friggin' rips. So, made it back and uh, we're all good. All right, guys, so that's going to wrap it up on Cletus McFarland's sand rail. This thing is dialed in. It's ready for him to come out and dune it. And, uh, yeah, I, it's just, I can't thank Carl at Shock Talk enough, man. The, the suspension tuning on this thing is just next level. It works so good. So, uh, as always, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you give us a like and a subscribe, and we will see you guys in the dunes.